a lot has happened since I last did uh, one of these YouTube videos. Currently at Loughborough University, so a place where I spent four four years, and uh, I don't often get to come back. But I'm here because I'm in the last stage of my rehab from from my injury, which is a it's a good point. Like in this whole like injury process for me, it's like the the very end point to be back running um, and back to full training these next few weeks. So I'm here just to get one on one rehab to have one-on-one S and C and just to make sure that these final stages go as planned. And today's been a recovery thing, so I've got 90 minutes on the elliptical cross trainer, which I've become very used to now. Um, and I've just got some stuff around my foot, so just proprioception and balance stuff and a little bit of strengthening. So it's a day which is important throughout these couple of weeks just to, just to get me back running. So um, it's the last bit of rehab stuff and cross training that people will see hopefully for me doing and it's been a long time like five weeks without running but all because if I take that amount of time now to get my foot ready and to spend it getting as strong as possible then I'll lose no time um, from now on so that's been the main thing from this is just I'm doing as much as possible to keep it on the safe side and keep it as risk-free um, to be able to make sure that I have the smoothest road possible from now until Worlds in the end of August. So I'm an hour through my 90 minute slog on this, but it's become probably my best friend and my worst enemy combined these past four or five weeks. So the most I got up to was, then my dad sent me two and a half hours, which I've never exercised for two and a half hours on anything. So I was there squirting gels and I was like mentally just watching the clock go down. And uh, I think that's the one thing from this is, like if you can get through two and a half hour cross training like 90 minute cross training in one place then mentally there's not too many sessions that will bore you as much as that but yeah it's it's been a chance to get an aerobic hit so i wouldn't have been able to do this sort of like quantity of aerobic stuff running so i think i've averaged up towards like 10 hours on a cross training a week um two or three sessions and yeah which is probably equivalent to like 90 miles which is a lot more I'd be doing running so the hope is by the time I get back properly training I'll be aerobically like fitter than I would have been before which kind of the way I'm trying to see it is there's a lot to gain from an injury rather than just a lot to lose so it's mainly been any session that I would do outdoors like winter wise running it's been replicated on here um, I find with this the cross trainer you can get your heart rate as similar if not higher and the beauty of it is you control your heart rate a lot more. So rather than just running and kind of hitting a pace, but seeing your heart rate and not being able to change it too much, on this you can push your back down a lot easier to control it. So I've had some good hits, it's been hard. Um, the main thing is you just sweat buckets. Hmm. So I come off this and the one thing that keeps me going is every 15 minutes, I'll have some water and <laughs> I look forward to that sip. Um, but it's just been about doing as much as I can whilst not compromising the healing. So keeping an energy balance where I'm recovering well, I'm eating enough, and I'm still letting my foot rest when it needs to. Do you want to tell us how the injury happened <laughs> for full context? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was going pretty good, I feel, in South Africa in January and we'd done three weeks and I was into my last uh, last week of the camp before going to Boston and racing and um, I was in the gym having done a tough track session the previous morning or that morning and uh, plyos is one thing that's always in my gym and something that I actually enjoy a lot and generally I'm right at them so I had high hurdle hops I was just tired and my dad was actually filming and I said, oh, don't film this one. It was from SNC coach. And he's like, don't film this one, it's just a warm up. Send him the proper one. And that's why I was doing the warm up one. I just kind of wimped out in the air, pretty much. And as I landed, I straddled the hurdle and it's put all my weight onto my right foot. 
and then as soon as I went over on it and it's so sore I knew that yeah like it's not great so it was a full gym and I had to just drag myself out and down the stairs try not to see any have anybody see it I know how bad it was and then the next day normally I've rolled my ankle before and I can walk about and it's just a little bit tender but the next day I was really sore so I went and got a scan um, and yeah they told me I'd like ripped a ligament a bit off the bone with a tiny tiny bit of bone and I'd sprained my foot so then I was in a boot from then for five weeks and that was kind of the worst point was like, like I'm in good shape here I wouldn't be able to show it and I just couldn't but I'm pretty good with yeah just not really sulking about it it was like well the worst thing that's going to happen from this is that I don't have an indoor season I've got six months until outdoors it hopefully is a blessing in disguise so since then I've just patiently been in that boot for five weeks they let me cross train in it I could do lifts and gym in it so I just saw it as a chance to yeah hold as much fitness as possible because when you get injured while you're fit it's a lot, lot easier than being unfit and trying to get fit while cross training so I've done tests while I've been here just to see how much I've lost and I haven't lost much of my calf which was the main thing because when you're in a boot for that amount of time your foot's not moving your calf's getting nothing so I used the complex machine I did a lot of isos in my boot and yeah I'm, I'm pleased with the outcome and I'm now getting back running this next week which is nice we're done yeah thumb made it's not too many more I say not too many more times I'm going to have to do that length on this, but it's going to be a bit of a transition period. I'll miss it, I think. It's not like I'm just going up someone's random t shirt and signing it. I swear I'm meant to be. Does this happen everywhere you go then? Oh, mate. <laughs> Can't keep away. Every day I've got to just do that balance stuff to let my foot get a little bit better towards being able to run. Uh, who's setting this program for you? Is this all British athletic stuff? So my physio, um, Alex O'Gorman, has an input with it, but while I'm here, it's uh, like John Olte, who's British athletic physio, so yeah, it's been good to me. I haven't done anything on my own. This is my first day where, because it's obviously Saturday and they need days off the neck, so I'm actually having to come here and do something on my own. You've got all the YouTube viewers for company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all hundred of them. <laughs> I got my boot off on Monday. I was doing this stuff probably like two, three days later, which like for me that was like a shock that I was doing it so soon, but my foot just made, yeah, a lot better progress than I thought it was gonna. Um, but this is something I'll keep in throughout probably um, a few times a week just to keep it up as much as possible and just try and do as much stuff on one leg as I can. I'm gonna try and make sure that by doing this there'll be nothing consequentially to come back to bite later on and the lightest medicine ball yeah, in I here i think i don't reckon anyone's touched this because it's so pathetic what was that one that it must be about a k i reckon i couldn't be a jumper just getting this stuff on my toes every single day would drive me mad now this is the stuff where it's like it's not hard is it but it's just boring yeah so i don't mind it at all it's it's novel now like this is the first week i've been doing it and because I haven't been able to move my foot properly, I don't mind it. Whereas if I'm still doing this in a couple of weeks, it'll get a little bit more, mm. more tiresome, I'm sure. In the sand, there's like less stability, you've got to control it more. And I've got my dogs in. <laughs> you know what's happened is like, I normally have horrible, I have horrible feet anyway, but because I haven't been running on that right foot, normally the toenails would be like black, whereas now they actually look. You got like a model. Do you have your nails done for this video? Oh, don't, don't, tell, <laughs> don't tell everyone that, mate. Come on, that was confidential. Good, buddy. How's that feel? Good, mate. Now, our racing shorts smaller than this, don't I? Yeah. It's alright, baby. I get it. You get the camera, I get the pins over. It's so fast. I should have shaved them. <laughs> Did you ever shave your legs? Yeah, for races. Do you shave for races? Yeah, but then when people ask why, mate, there's no real answer that makes sense. It's just like, you feel, you just feel, feel fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> I think the treatment thing is a, is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. 
Alright, pal, so we'll do our first set exactly where we were last time, okay? 120 yeah. minutes. So all we'll do, mate, we'll go to 115, so you just have to jump a little bit higher. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll see how that feels and looks, and we'll maybe drop down to 112, 110. Yeah. Lovely. Just one more like that part up in there, mate. I think that's a good, um, good frequency to leave it on today. My last one of the day is just getting ready for running next week. I'm trying to do as many like contact stuff but without having the full body weight still so like the pool is a good way to do that so it's a bit of an easier thing to do it's pretty much prancing about in here for half an hour um, just trying to keep my, my like feet moving on the ground so rather than what I've been doing previously which is aqua jogging in like the deep end and not wanting the, my feet touching the floor this is the opposite where I'm just going to be moving around and just yeah doing something with a bit of foot contact Dunk. Big day of rehab. It is, mate. <laughs> it's not a hard day, this one, but it's just quite a lot of stuff to squeeze in. Mind numbing. Now, that's what that's what the rehab is, though. It's like, yeah, it's not it's not hard stuff. Like the challenge and stuff is my session days, but then it's just a lot of little bits that you neglect throughout when you're actually able to run. Which I have to do a lot more of that now and then carry it into yeah being back to running. It's not over yet, is it? Yeah, it's good. Nice step forward again. My day of rehab and cross training done. Um, pretty boring lifestyle at the moment with it, where it's just you have to kind of get used to yeah doing the same sort of thing every day. Um, but yeah, I'm back running this next week. So in a week's time, I'll be back running properly. And then from there, it'll just be a build up gradually. Um, I've still got so much time. We don't go away again until I think end of April. So like time is definitely on my side with it and hopefully I've not lost too much. That's the main aim if I can keep my body as good a condition as possible, which I've tried to do. And then my heart and lungs have been working hard enough. So I hope that, yeah, everything's going to be pretty back on track as soon as possible. But I'll hopefully get back to some running content um, in no time. Where are you going to go in April? South Africa again? No, we're going oh. back to Flagstaff. Oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, it's come around quick. It's been the toughest bit of this always probably. <clears throat> Yeah, well, planning to race indoors yeah. and then having to sit back and watch all the races I was meant to be in. Um, but I was never going to do an indoor season, so it's not been too bad. It's just something where like, I've gone through the process of getting fit for it. Therefore, in the whole like progress of the year, I've done what I needed to do. I just haven't had the races to show yeah. the kind of shape I put myself into, but that's fine. Um, it's the summer that counts and like the main thing for me is going to be getting to Budapest in as good shape as I possibly can be and this doesn't really change that at all if I was to pick a time to get injured it would have probably been this sort of period and um, it's hopefully going to be a bit of a blessing in disguise where I potentially could have been too fit too soon whereas now I can properly make sure I'm peaking for, for August time so yeah it's, it's just been a bit of a test that's what I'd say and there's nothing really more to it than that it's not it's not been a disaster it's not been um, something that's derailed my whole season. It's just been a test of kind of keeping my head throughout this whole process. You're off to do some proper TV tomorrow as well. Yeah, so tomorrow, <laughs> um, my input into Euro indoors not being there is that I'm going to be sat on the BBC sofa. So hopefully once this video is out, it's been and I've done an okay job. You haven't um, sworn on TV. No, I've not said something <laughs> stupid or embarrassed myself. And uh, yeah, it's a good experience. I, I like talking um, probably too much to the point where I like, I need to shut up a little bit more, so why not put that to good use and sit on a sofa and chat about <laughs> athletics? So it's also a good place to watch it. Like I was just watching the races last night on my own in my hotel room, so watching it on the sofa in the company of other people that appreciate the sport will be nice. <laughs>